Okay, I'm going to share you with the audience now because I'm sure there are plenty of questions and comments. Um, if you are from a particular organisation, if you can flag that with us, that would be great just to put your comments in context. But if you could just put your hands up really high and someone will come to you with a microphone. Good evening. I'm from the Wheeler Centre Admiration Society. Thank you very much <laughs> for a, another fantastic presentation tonight. Shin, I'd like to take up one point. You did say that parents would never put their children on dangerous boats when they're in a safe place to begin with. Apparently, Alan Curdy's father did exactly that, and the little boy ended up on the beach in Turkey. Mm -hmm. Can I just also mention that tonight there was a big crowd waiting outside. Everyone waited in line very patiently and when the doors opened we all moved in, no one cut in line. And this is not a, 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 a right-wing conservative crowd. Uh, my view is that people are perfectly happy to have an organised refugee uh, intake as long as people aren't showing up demanding to be let in. If you'd like to comment on any of that, thank you very much. I, look, I think that what you touch on is a legitimate concern in the sense of how does one c create equity in a system of international crisis? And I think the two responses to that are, and Ireland Curdie's father is a very interesting example, because if you remember what I said about Alexander Betts, the Oxford University professor, he said there's three choices. There's living in a refugee camp. Now, this is because the system is broken. If we're living in a refugee camp, the waiting is around 20 to 25 years. And actually, it's not a queue. It's more like a lottery. So there's a tiny amount of resettlement places, but that goes to 2% of refugees a year. And you don't just move up in that queue. So in some ways, even the 25-year waiting list is kind of a bit confusing because it's not definite that if you wait those 25 years you'll get through it so that's your first option your second op option is urban destitution which is where Island Curdie's family was in which is living on the streets and you can see this and if you if you go and look at at the footage coming out of Lebanon and Turkey you've got Syrian children and families on the street doing god knows what how on earth they make two cents I don't know but you can probably imagine and the research indicates exactly the kind of exploitative labour those people have to have to do to just survive. So that's your second option. And your third option is that dangerous journey. So what I'm advocating actually is we can create formal, managed, safe processes. In all of the palaver about talking about this being the greatest movement of people after World War II, there was a great movement of people after World War II. We benefited greatly from it. People got stuck in, agreed that immigration was worthwhile, created a process and put people through it. Exactly what I'm arguing for is a process. But what we've created instead is a false notion of an international process that somehow has to be adhered to when in fact it's not working and the way of adhering to it is by actively pushing back people and pushing them back not only literally on boats and through detention centres but through our formal migration pathways, clearing them out of those as well. So I suppose that's my response. Do you think there's ever a way of ensuring that 